How can you cut yourself out to make an attention grabbing thumbnail for your content? Do you need to pay for Photoshop to make something like that? And how much work is it? Let's find out. My name is Chris Cruz. I've spent almost 20 years traveling the country, talking into microphones and mixing on turntables. Now I do it all from home. Let me show you how. This is Home Studio Catalyst. Last season, I showed you how to make an attention grabbing thumbnail by just taking a freeze frame of your video and adding some text. And it looked pretty cool. But now we're going to level that up, but keep the price point the same at zero dollars. If you think about it, the thumbnail for your video or for your content is like the front of a book or the front of a menu at a restaurant or an album cover. It's designed to entice people to want to see what's inside. I always hate when I see a content creator make something really cool online. If it's on Instagram or TikTok, YouTube, and they just use an auto generated thumbnail where the freeze frame kind of looks like this. Look at this photograph. It's a really cool piece of content, but you don't want to click on it because the thumbnail is really unappealing. There's just something about going to somebody's account on Instagram or YouTube and seeing all their thumbnails kind of have some kind of theme and they match and they all kind of pop out and they're all cool looking. It really does give you more of a professional presence on social media, especially if you want people to watch your video content. An eye catching thumbnail that pops out really does subliminally make them want to click it and watch it just because it looks pretty. Think of your favorite content creator. I guarantee if you go to their channel right now on whatever social media platform they're posting on, they probably have some really cool thumbnails that help bump up their numbers and algorithm. So today I'm going to show you how to cut yourself out to make a really cool one of a kind custom thumbnail for your content using Pixlr for absolutely free. And a couple cool things to note. You don't need to be proficient in Photoshop to pull this off. You don't need Photoshop to pull this off. And you also don't need any kind of green screen behind you. I'm going to take a freeze frame of this video here in a second with this exact background and cut me out precisely so I can put it into a really cool thumbnail. Let's jump into one of my favorite photo editing websites, Pixlr, for absolutely free. And I'll show you how to cut yourself out of a photo for a really cool thumbnail. Let's go. So before we start cutting out your photo, you have to have a photo to begin with that we are able to cut out. So you have a couple different options. The first thing you can do is literally just take a picture with your phone or your camera or whatever. What I like to do is go into my video editor and actually pick a freeze frame of the video. So usually at the end, I'll do like a couple of poses you can see here, and then I will snapshot one that I think looks best. Obviously, we're doing a video about cutting stuff out. So I'm doing these awkward, stupid poses, you know, holding scissors. So I'm going to take a screenshot of one of those freeze frames and we're going to import it into Pixlr. This is Pixlr.com. It is a completely free program. Um, I would not recommend using this on your phone. If you're doing something this intricate and cutting it out, you definitely want to do it on your Mac or PC. It's a website. You don't need to install anything. So when you go to Pixlr.com, you're going to want to go to E for editor. Pixlr X is like the quicker version of it, a little bit more similar to Canva. We want a little bit more in depth. So we're going to go to Pixlr E, import our photo and start cutting ourselves out. Okay, we've opened up our photo inside Pixlr. And before we can start, this image does not have a transparent background. So if you grab the eraser, which is this tool right here, and start erasing, see how it turns just white? That's not what we want. We want a transparent background. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and I just like using the keyboard shortcuts, it's a lot faster. Control A to select the whole screen. Control C to copy it. Now we wanna start a new file, new image. We want it to be the same size as before, but we want to have a transparent background. So do not turn on the background, create. Now see those squares? That means the background's transparent and you'll be able to see backgrounds through it if you're using it for a thumbnail, for a video, or for your content. Now, control V. There's our image. Now, when we start erasing stuff, see how the background's those gray and gray squares? That's transparent. So to start, we're gonna do kind of like a broad outline like this to cut me out of this photograph and then we'll get a little bit more detailed. So I like to start with a pretty big eraser just to get rid of a lot of the stuff that's not close to me. So we grab the eraser tool again right here, go to size. I always like to use the hardness edges. I don't like to use the soft edges that kind of blends in. So we're gonna do at least like, let's call it 400, I'm just guessing. And we're basically gonna, gonna go like this. I'm gonna cut out me and then the chair's gonna go away and then the scissors are gonna stay in my hand. So everything other than that can go. So I kind of just do it like this, take a big fat eraser, make sure you don't get too close to yourself but you can get within, you know, pretty close there. And sometimes you can just drag this or you can do it click by click. If you drag it and do a big move like this and you're like, oh shit, I went over myself. Then you gotta start over from the whole last move. Control Z is how you undo it. So sometimes it's better just to click like this. 
And then what we'll do as we get closer and closer to me, we'll check, and I'm going to cut the microphone out here too. We'll keep getting a smaller and smaller eraser until all you see is just me. So now let's go to the 100 size and you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out in Pixlr. And again, just get a little bit closer this time. Don't get too close. That's the pillow behind my head on my chair. So we don't need that. Um, the hair we're going to cover pretty heavily because that's a really important part to making this look realistic. Again, we can get a little bit closer here. The microphone doesn't matter. So I'm probably going to cut the photo off like that um, in my actual thumbnail, but we'll get to that part here in a second. Get a little bit closer to the scissors here. Again, don't get too close. Don't get too aggressive, but you can get really close to yourself. And just, we don't need the chair, but we do need my jacket there in the shock. That's part of me. Same deal. Grab a smaller eraser. Now let's say like 50. Oh, I missed a part. Make sure you don't miss anything. And I'll show you a trick at the end too to see if you missed any spots before you bring this into Canva or some other program to actually make your thumbnail. This is just to cut you out to import it into that program so you can put yourself in any kind of thumbnail. So now we'll start doing the detail stuff. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because that would take, you know, maybe I usually take about like 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. The nice thing is when you're cutting stuff out, it can be pretty forgiving. And what I mean by that is let's say you see my jacket the lines right here. Let's say you go like this and go a little bit inside. You're going to be fine. It's going to be okay. You don't want to go too close, but you also don't want like see right here how there's that blue tint. That's kind of a dead giveaway that things were cut out. So if you can get really close and get rid of that kind of just like this a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to zoom out like that in the actual thumbnail. So see how good that looks. That took us two seconds. So now we'll go back in. This is kind of tricky because my jacket and the chair look exactly the same, but you can kind of see the outlines like right here. And if you're worried about, you know, getting more detailed, you can get a very small eraser. Like see that little corner right there. I'm actually going to leave it because you can't tell. Then get rid of some of that gray right there. Now we'll go up to my armpit, a very sexy part of the editing process. Now we're definitely going to need a smaller eraser for that. See this corner right here. So again, go back to the brush. Let's do like 15. You can do square or a circle. It's kind of whatever you prefer. This is not perfect, but again, and we're going to put an outline on this when we put it into Canva for our actual thumbnail. So I'm not going to sweat it too much. Let's go back to 50. Basically, the smaller eraser, the more detail you get. The bigger eraser, the faster you can do this. See, I'm kind of just going one by one. And there's a little bit of a blue glow. I'm okay with that because, again, there's going to be like a white outline or like a little bit of a shadow. If you want to move your cursor, instead of going just in and out every time, you can also grab over here, the preview window. You can go like this. So we'll go to my arm right here. So you kind of get the idea. You're just clicking and taking stuff away. Again, you might want to get a little bit closer to get some of that color out of there just so it's not so obvious what we're doing. But again, it's going to be a smaller thumbnail and it's going to have an outline around just me. So don't sweat that too much. Don't spend too much time on it. You want to get it right, but you also don't want to go like this. Like see how deep I went in there. It's obvious that that looks something's wrong with my wrist. So control Z undo it. Go back here. Keep clicking away. Now we'll go up to the scissors to show you show you a little bit more precision cutting out. No pun intended. So we'll come back and finish this stuff later. It's important to get these parts in between. So the background is going through the scissors. Obviously, like if you're wearing glasses, you want to cut out the part of your glasses as well. I'll show you that. So this is going to need a really small eraser. So let's go with 15. And again, we'll get as close to the edge as possible. Don't get too close. We'll need a smaller one for that. Go like that. And these ones you do want to be pretty precise on because it's going to be very obvious that you um, cut this out if you don't do it right. So I like to get in really close, almost down to the pixel. Again, this is just the size five eraser and then kind of go like this. And yes, this is going to take us longer than just using the magic wand tool. I should have talked about that at the beginning. I just don't ever use it because I find it doesn't work very well. It'll get like half the job done right. Unless you have like professional photos taken in or, you know, some kind of professionally lit studio or something like that. I wouldn't bother using it unless you're shooting like in front of a, a white backdrop or a really well lit green screen. I actually hate green screens. I never use them. I think they always look terrible. Even on TV, sometimes when you're watching like the local weather, you can always tell they're in front of a green screen. I just green screen. I just don't think they look good. Look, that took us about five seconds. I missed a little bit down here. So let's get in there a little bit more. And there inside of the scissors cut out. Another tricky one is the glasses. So let's get really close here. And once in a while, I'll forget this. I haven't worn glasses my whole life. So sometimes I forget I'm even wearing them. Uh, I'm going to leave that gray because it looks just like it's a natural reflection and shadow on the frame of my glasses. 
get that one little pixel here. You do want to be careful when you're going toward your face because then, you know, one screw up is kind of obvious, but see how we zoom out, you can't even tell. But when you get really close, sometimes it is obvious that you made a really weird error or, you know, weird edit there. I saw a little cloud somewhere. Where did it go? There. And I'll show you a trick at the end to see if we cut everything out okay. Because sometimes you'll have like one or two little pixels you can't even see. So what I like to do is um, on the layer of image, which is me, you go to filter, outer glow. And what this is going to do is that. See all this stuff that we missed? Look at all that. And I didn't even see it. So what I like to do is kind of cancel and go one by one, get a bigger eraser um, so we can go back and see what we missed. So again, outer glow. As you can see, there's one right here. Let's get an even bigger eraser. This isn't even big enough. I know there's one in here somewhere. I kind of just click and go like this. And again, I know this takes some time, but if you want this to be right, then this is how you have to do this. We'll kind of go like that. We're not even done with all that stuff, so I'm not worried about that. Here, we can grab a giant eraser. I obviously missed some stuff over here somewhere. Just hold down the left click and go like that. Now, let's kind of see what it's looking like. Okay, a little bit better. I haven't gotten to this stuff yet, so I'm not worried about that. And I'm not going to use this glow either. I'm going to do it in Canva. So don't let that dissuade you from saying, oh, this looks so terrible. I'm not even using this on this project. So let's move on to the hair because the hair can be really tricky. And then I'll show you the finished product cutout and what it actually is going to look like. So let's go back to like, I don't know, 20. Now that might be too small, but we're going to start right here. And you don't need to get every single hair follicle and every single, you know, strand of hair. You just don't want any black showing in the background around you. And just take your time. Like I usually put some tunes on, just do this while I'm editing, or I'll jump on a phone call with somebody to kind of distract me. Because I, I spend a lot of time on this because I like it to be right. See these couple of hairs here? I'm just going to completely erase them. Let's get a little bit smaller eraser, like a 15. Boom, boom, boom. And you're going to say, wait, Chris, you just cut a bunch of your hair off. It's going to look really weird. Yeah, until you see it when I zoom out, then it's not going to look so bad. You don't want to get too close because then it looks robotic. But like, you see what I'm saying? You can't even tell. Now, if you have some kind of like, you know, maybe a ponytail or some long hair you want to leave in there, I would leave those for these. I'm just going to get completely rid of them. It's going to look weird while I'm doing this. But in the photo, you're not even going to know they were ever even there. Kind of go along that blue line because there was a blue light behind me as a up light and a back light while I was shooting the video. Kind of go like that, so on and so forth. And like if I really wanted to get anal, I can get every single one of these blue pixels out. Again, I'm going to put an outline on them so I'm not worried about it too much. Kind of just go like that. You don't want to go too fast though because then you're going to miss details like that. And I think it's always better to go one or two pixels in as opposed to one or two pixels out. You'd rather go a little bit deeper into the, the cut or the erase, so to speak, than to not do it at all. Like this is the top of my hair right here. So I'm just going to erase those strands because they look, they're going to look weird just sitting by themselves and then kind of go like that. And in a perfect world, you should never know what color the background was. And this is why you don't need a green screen because we're going to cut in so close you're never going to see a lot of this stuff. You keep cutting there, so on and so forth. And then again, I'll come back and finish all this stuff. But for the right side of me, I'm going to have me against the corner of the thumbnail. So all this stuff into the right, I'm not even going to bother cutting out because in Canva, when I import this photo, I'm going to have the edge of the screen like right there. So it doesn't even matter. So I think you guys get the idea. I'm going to finish cutting this out and then we'll import it into Canva and I will show you what that looks like. All right. So my photos completely cut out. I did want to point out two things. I'm sure at this point in the video, some people are saying, oh my God, you could do this so much faster in Photoshop. Just use the magic wand tool. We've already covered that. And again, this video isn't about using Photoshop. This is about cutting out yourself for a really cool thumbnail using a free program that doesn't take a very long time to learn. One thing I wanted to point out before we jump into Canva is you do want to save this as a PNG file. If you save it as a JPEG, the background will no longer be transparent. So save it as a PNG, call it whatever you want. We're going to call it um, super awesome cut out. We're going to save it and then import it into Canva. Okay, we've got my super awesome cut out photo imported into Canva looking really good. I like to have the top of your head just about touch the top of the screen. I don't like to have a lot of headroom. So right about, I mean, honestly, like that. That looks fine. All right. So let's pick a background to show you guys what this could look like. I'm going to spend some more time and make the thumbnail look perfect for my YouTube uh, video. And I'll show you that here at the end. But just for example, let's grab this landscape. Maybe it's a video about traveling. Put it in the background. Up oh, and deleted my image. No big deal. Boop. Bring it back in. Some, once in a while, Pixlr does or Canva does some goofy stuff like that. 
Okay, that honestly right there looks pretty professional. I'd obviously put some text in here and stuff like that. But, oh, damn it. There we go. I do want to show you guys one more trick. One thing you want to do, too, is see how my image is huge. Bring it closer to you. So when you're clicking other elements, you're not accidentally clicking your photo. So let's put this against the edge of the screen so the microphone's out of there. Just like that. Just like we said we were going to. And I want to show you one thing before we wrap up. And that is an outline effect. They didn't used to have this in Canva. They just added it. It's called Shadows. And you can do a thing like a glow. See how that puts a little black glow behind you. You can do like a drop shadow like that. You can do it at an angle, different kinds of um, backgrounds. But you definitely want to have some kind of glow behind you. I usually prefer a white one. I'll see how this ends up depending on the background color. If it's a light color, do black. If it's a dark color, do white, just like that. So if we were doing this, I would definitely do a black outline. Um, I don't want it super transparent so maybe like there and if you don't blur it it just looks really hard you don't you want to blur it at least a little bit just to get a little bit of that just so it kind of pops off the background and make it a little bit less prominent um so i'm gonna goof around with this and see what final product we can come up with for our thumbnail for the video and then we'll see how it turns out okay after a little bit more dinking around in pixlr and canva i was able to come up with this really cool thumbnail that i, I think really explains what the video is about and i think it looks really good i did do a little trickery to make this actual cutout so it looked like the background was transparent again just to um explain exactly what this video is all about but the text was really simple it's the same one as my previous thumbnails and i keep them all kind of in a file here so i can copy and paste stuff and i put this picture of photoshop because you don't need it I mean, I think this turned out really, really good and it took us maybe 20 minutes to cut out the whole thing and do the glow in the outline. But that's the thumbnail I'm going with for this video. And I'm really happy with it. There you go. A really attention grabbing thumbnail for free in just a little bit of time. And it costs us no money. And that's what this show is all about. Every week I show you how to either make content at home for cheap or for free. And then also some tactics to get more eyeballs on your content to help you build your fan base. If that's something you're striving to do, and if you enjoyed today's video, I would appreciate to subscribe to the channel. It only takes a couple of seconds, and that way you'll never miss my future videos. And if you are making custom thumbnails for your channel, drop it below so I can check it out and see what you're creating. I'm Chris Cruz. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.